Hey, are you ready to explore the Bible with me today? I'm ready to explore with you. I hope you have a notebook or some paper that you can write special things down. Bring some pens or pencils, crayons, or whatever you want to write with. And we are going to start in the Bible today. That's a good place to start Bible exploration, right? Grab your Bible and turn to a book in the New Testament of the Bible. We're looking today at Mark chapter 14. So we have Matthew, then Mark, the second book of the New Testament we're looking at today. And we are going to look at a few verses here that you probably already know or you've heard part of them or maybe all of them before. But remember last week when we were together in Bible exploration, we were talking about a specific character trait that we should allow God to help grow in us. Do you remember what it was? That's right, it's honesty. Today we're going to learn some more about what honesty is. What does it mean to be honest? Well, it means to tell the truth. But today we're going to learn that it means to tell the truth no matter what. No matter what happens, we tell the truth. That's right. Yes, we do. Okay, did you find Mark chapter 14? Because we're going to start looking at verse... 53, we're not going to read all the other verses at the beginning of the chapter, but you sure can write that down in your notebook to read the rest of Mark chapter 14 later. I'll give you a little bit of information about what's been happening in the verses that lead up to verse 53. So Jesus was just arrested, and he was arrested for something that really didn't happened the way that everybody said it had happened. Jesus was arrested and he was going to be, this was be the beginning of the journey that he would take to the cross to be crucified. And yeah, that makes us really sad. But we also know that that's not where that story ended. Jesus, with all the power that he has as the son of God, was able to defeat death and he was raised up and he got victory over death and because he did we have victory too so it's an awesome thing what his power can do is incredible there's no power like the power of god and that power is available to you and to me today too that power is the power that helps us be honest and tell the truth no matter what so when we pick up in Mark chapter 14 today with verse 53, Jesus, like I said, had been arrested and he was taken to a place where he was going to be put on trial. He was going to be asked some questions and he had to choose how he was going to respond, how he was going to answer. And we will learn from reading these things and talking a little bit about them today that Jesus could tell the truth no matter what was going to happen. So because Jesus could do that and we are his children, God's children, we have that same power so we can tell the truth no matter what as well. Let's read. Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 53. It says, they, meaning those people who arrested Jesus, they took Jesus to the high priest's home after they arrested him, where the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter, one of Jesus' followers, one of his disciples, followed at a distance and went right into the high priest's courtyard, like into his yard, basically, into the gated area around his home. There, he, meaning Peter, sat with the guards, warming himself by the fire. So he was nearby. He was a witness to what was going to happen. We know it's true because it's in the Bible. Let's look at verse 55. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus. They wanted proof that he had done something wrong. Why did they want that? It says it right here. 
They wanted to find evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death. But they couldn't find any. There was no evidence that Jesus had done anything wrong because he hadn't. But listen to what happens next. In verse 56, it says, Many false witnesses spoke against him, but they contradicted each other. Now, do you know what a false witness is? Yeah, you've got it. It's a liar. Somebody who tells what's not true. We never should do that. But there were many at this point in history, because this is actual history. This really did happen. At this point in history, the Bible says many false witnesses spoke against Jesus. But their stories didn't match each other. They were all lying, but they weren't all telling the same lie. Isn't that crazy? Now, what do you think the high priest should have done right then when he was hearing all of these lies and none of them were the same? He should have known maybe that they were not telling the truth, not any of them. And he should have said, no, go away. We're not dealing with this today. This man hasn't done anything wrong, but that's not what happened. Let's read on. In verse 57, it says, Finally, some men stood up and gave this false testimony, or we could also say, told this lie. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days I will build another made without human hands. Verse 59 says, But even they didn't get their stories straight. They were not telling the truth. They were not being honest. Verse 60 says, Then the high priest stood up before the others, and he spoke to Jesus. He asked Jesus this question, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? In other words, he could have been saying, Do you have anything to say about this? What is your answer to everything that's being said about you? It says here, he asked Jesus, what do you have to say for yourself? Verse 61 says, but Jesus was silent and he made no reply. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody's telling something about me that's not true, I want to say something about it. Are you the same? Yeah, I think probably we want to say, no, that's not what happened. No, that's not what I said. Oh, that's not true. But Jesus remained quiet. He didn't answer. When the high priest asked him, do you have anything to say about what these men are saying? Then the high priest asked him another question. He asked him directly, Are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus said, and you can look at this in verse 62, I am. Finally, he answered. He said who he was. And he said, you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Now you would think that when Jesus told the truth, the high priest would have been happy, right? That's not what happened. The high priest reacted very badly to the truth. In 63, verse 63, it says, Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard this blasphemy. That means that you're speaking against God. You're speaking in a way to put yourself in a place where God belongs. That's a sort of simple way of saying it's way more than that. But for today's purposes, that's what we'll say. And he said to the people, what is your verdict? In other words, he was asking the people, what do you think should happen? And they all said, guilty, he deserves to die. And then some of them began to spit at him, and they blindfolded him and beat him with their fists and said, prophesy to us. And the guards slapped him as they took him away. Oh my goodness, what a horrible thing 
to hear. What an awful thing to imagine. As we know, it did happen. We can only think of what it must have been like to be there in that crowd and to be Jesus. Honesty, as we're learning today, means telling the truth no matter what. Jesus didn't answer the lies of the people who had brought him before the high priest. But when the high priest asked him a direct question, are you the Messiah? Are you the one? He answered truthfully, yes. And when Jesus answered, I am, he knew that he would have to pay a price for telling the truth. Now I want to ask you a question. Have you ever told the truth and you knew that there was going to be a little bit of trouble because the truth was that you had done something that you shouldn't have or the truth might get somebody else in trouble but it was also helping to make things right? Sometimes when we tell the truth we're doing the right thing but it doesn't mean everything goes very smoothly. This is what it means that honesty is to tell the truth no matter what. Sometimes we know that telling the truth is going to be a good thing and the right thing. It always is. But somebody might get in trouble or something might be told that you or a friend or a family member didn't want to be told. But in the end, it's all going to work out just right. If you keep reading along after the verses where we stopped today in Mark chapter 14, you will read, and I'm sure you already know too, the rest of history that's recorded about what happened with Jesus. And like I said at the very beginning before we started reading, that it was going to be very difficult for him and he was going to have to suffer through a lot of really horrible things but the end result was that we get to be children of God. We get to be part of the family of God and we can live with God's power and strength in us to tell the truth and to do right and to love other people and all of the things that we know the Bible tells us to do. But sometimes we're a little bit tempted to maybe not tell the truth. I think if we're honest, we can all say there's a temptation for us sometimes to think about, should I tell the truth even though it might not keep me out of trouble? Or should I not tell the truth? We can decide to keep quiet and not tell the truth. Or we can decide to say something that's not the truth. Either one of those things is a lie keeping quiet about it in our hearts and not speaking it out or speaking out what's not true. Those things are both deceitful and not honest. Have you ever had an opportunity to tell the truth and you didn't? I think we probably all have. I want to show an illustration today of what it looks like the difference between telling the truth and not telling the truth. How God wants to use us. He wants us to be truthful. He wants us to be honest. He wants us to do things in love toward other people, showing other people who he is. He wants us to live great lives. It doesn't mean everything always goes our way, but it always goes God's way when we hear from him and do things the way he wants us to, that's always right and that's always good. So could you imagine that this cup is you, what your life looks like? Or we could imagine that it's me, or we can imagine that it's each one of us. You imagine that it's you, I'll imagine that it's me. And we can think about how when we ask Jesus into our hearts, he comes and fills us. And everything is good because all that we need is in us. This is good, right? Of course it is. Now, if you were thirsty, you might even be able to take a drink of this and it would taste good to you. 
because, and it would refresh you because it's all held in there. God wants us to share who he is with other people. He wants us to be able to hold in our hearts all that he is. And when we have him in us, then we can share wherever we go. Now imagine this, maybe you, this is you, or this is me, and maybe, we'll pretend it's you for a minute, because I know a lot of my friends who are watching today are in school or finishing up school. Maybe you have a big test that you have to do for the end of your school year. Here in Massachusetts, we're getting very close to the end of the school year, and a lot of students are doing tests and different things for the end of the year. So imagine that your teacher sent you home with some studying that you needed to do. And she told your parents that these were the things that you needed to study to be ready for your test. And you knew also these were the things that you needed to study to be ready for your big test for the end of the school year. And so you went home and you really meant to do all of the studying that you needed to do and you really want to do well on the test, but it's a beautiful day outside and the pool is crystal clear, sparkling, it's hot outside, the perfect temperature for a great swim. So you want to swim instead of study. Now, maybe dad's at work and mom gets called by one of her friends and she needs to go on an errand with her friend to go help her friend. So you're the only one at home. You know you're supposed to be studying for your test, but you really want to get in the pool. So you think, and you think, and you think, hmm, should I get in the pool? Nobody would really know because I could hang up my wet bathing suit somewhere where it would dry before people even knew it. I could even throw it in the dryer. Uh, maybe I could get in the pool for five minutes and then I could study for two hours. And then anyway, you convince yourself to get in the pool. And five minutes that you were gonna be in there turns into an hour. And you know mom's going to be back in two hours and you think, well, I've been in here this long and I really am okay with all of my studying. I'm sure I'm going to ace the test. I really don't have to do so much studying. I'm confident I can get it. I'll get a good grade. Maybe I only have to study for a half hour. And then you convince yourself that maybe 15 minutes is enough and you keep staying in the pool and keep staying in the pool. And all of a sudden, you hear mom's car coming down the road. You jump so fast out of the pool, run inside, change your clothes, and really fast, throw yourself in your desk chair and look like you're studying. And mom comes in and says, hi, have you been studying all this time? And you're quiet for a minute. And then she says, do you feel ready for your test? And you're quiet for a minute. And then she says, I'm so proud of you. You are studying and doing well. And you say, thank you. Yes, I am studying. Did you answer totally honestly? You led her to believe that you had been studying all the time. You didn't tell her. I've only been studying for the last two seconds. It would be kind of like taking this screw and poking a hole in this cup. Now, what's gonna happen when I pour liquid in here? Mm -hmm. The liquid's gonna come out, right? But we don't always just cover up the truth. Sometimes we tell a lie. Maybe it's something to do with a relationship with a friend. Maybe we hurt somebody and we let them think that it was somebody else because we say, yeah, so-and-so really isn't your friend, you know. Were you their friend by agreeing with so-and-so's ugly words? I don't think so. Are you telling the truth when you say, yeah, I went to bed at the right time and I, I, I went to bed and your parents say, you know you're supposed to turn the lights off, no reading under the covers. 
So they said, no reading under the covers. After they go out and shut your bedroom door, you decide, I'm not going to read under the covers, but I'm going to read. I just won't put my head under the covers. And the next day, your dad asks you, did you go right to sleep when I told you good night last night? You have a choice. Are we going to poke one more hole in here? Because you say a lie to your dad? Or are we not going to make one more hole? Because see what happens when we have all of the holes in our cup? That cup, that first one that we poured, held everything that it needed to hold. This one is not going to hold everything that goes into it. I can keep pouring and pouring and pouring, but this cup is never going to get full. Never. Because the holes mean that the good stuff doesn't have enough place to go. We have to be truthful. And we have to tell the truth no matter what. Sometimes it's going to be hard to tell the truth. But let me ask it in this way. Do you like it? when people tell you the truth? Or do you like it when they don't tell you the whole truth? See, sometimes we think about honesty of how it's going to make me feel and what trouble it might keep me out of. I'm going to just put this down over here because I'm going to show you something else today too. We think about, well, it's almost the truth. Or I didn't tell a lie, but did you tell the truth? When Jesus, in the scriptures that we read today, told the truth, he knew that when he said, yes, I am the Messiah, he knew that he would enter into some difficulty, but he also knew that that difficulty that he would enter into, that suffering that he would endure and go through, was because he would be able to lay down his life and get victory over death so that each one of us would have the chance and the opportunity to serve God and to be part of the family of God. We have to keep in mind that there is more in our life than just what's happening in the moment. God has given his son Jesus and his life in us, gives us power to tell the truth and be honest and live for God. And sometimes we make wrong choices. We have to make the choice then to do it right and get it God's way. And sometimes we have to tell the truth and admit what we did that we shouldn't so that we can get things right with God. But our honesty also helps other people. I have one more thing that I want to show you as we get ready to close our Bible exploration time today. Do you like hot chocolate? I do. Now, last week when we were at Bible Exploration, I was telling you, it was so hot around here. It was like in the 90s, and it was, wow, so hot. All I wanted to do was go outside and get in a pool somewhere or run under a sprinkler or something to get cool. Last night, I went outside to water my flowers, and I went, wow, maybe I should have put a little jacket or a sweater on. You see, this morning, I'm wearing one. It was a little chilly out there. And when it's cold or chilly even, I like to have hot chocolate. Do you like that too? Well, I want to ask you, um, how do you make hot chocolate at your house? Do you use something like this? Probably. Mm -hmm. So maybe not this brand, but we know that when we open this container, take a spoon and put some of that into a cup like this and we add either hot water or hot milk, however you make it. Some people do half and half, a little bit of each. You mix that up, you stir it, you drink it. It's delicious. It's especially great if you ask me if you put marshmallows in it. That's amazing. So if you were making hot chocolate, you might like to use something like this, right? Me too. But what if we decided to use something like this? Now, maybe in your mom's baking supplies, she has some of this too. This is chocolate, just like this is chocolate. 
but this isn't quite the same taste. This is cocoa powder. Have you ever eaten cocoa powder? I'm going to challenge you, if you haven't, to go after we end our Bible exploration time today and ask your mom if you can have a little bit of hot chocolate and a little bit of water or milk mixed with just cocoa powder. If you're really brave, you can take a little dry hot chocolate powder and put it on your tongue and taste it. Then you can take a little bit of dry cocoa powder, put it on your tongue and taste it and see which one tastes the best. Do you have any idea which one you would like to drink? How about you, Pastor Peterson? You're making a very funny face over there. You don't like hot chocolate, Pastor Peterson? I like hot chocolate. You do like hot chocolate? Mm -hmm. So could after we finish with Bible exploration today, could I make you some hot chocolate? And maybe I'll make it special for you today, making it with this, not this. Mm, you have to add something to that cocoa powder. You don't like cocoa powder by itself? No. Why? Have you tasted cocoa powder before? Oh, yeah. Oh, how does it taste to you? Not nice. It's a little bit bitter, isn't it? Very. Yeah. Now, why am I talking about making hot cocoa with either hot cocoa mix or cocoa powder? We have to think about whether we want to put sweet or bitter things into our mouths, right? Not many people on the planet would really like the bitter. But I will say this, that Many people like the little bit sweeter. When we tell the truth, we have to think about what goes out of our mouth. We're thinking right now about which one of these we might like to put into our mouths, and we know which one would taste the best. We choose hot chocolate mix with marshmallows and all the good things in it. We don't choose cocoa with no sugar, no marshmallows, no yummy stuff. They're kind of the same, but they don't taste the same at all. In our hearts, we have everything that we need to give what tastes or seems good to other people. Are we giving all that we have of God or are we telling a lie? This is the reason why it matters for us to be honest all the time, to tell the truth no matter what. Sometimes it's hard to tell the truth and sometimes we have a little bit of trouble that we have to work through because of something that we chose that we shouldn't have chosen. But when we are given the opportunity to tell the truth. We should tell the truth so that we're not adding more trouble. Because what's in our heart is what we're going to give to other people. And if we're not being honest and we're not telling the truth, even if we want to give what would be sweet tasting like hot cocoa, hot chocolate, what we really only can give is what is bitter cocoa powder without the sugar. Now, it might be true that you're thinking of something that you need to sort out, fix up in your heart. And if that's the case, then I want to encourage you to take some time to pray and ask God to forgive you for what you've done that you shouldn't have. And then to give you courage to go and tell the truth to your parent or a guardian or a friend, someone that you trust, tell the truth about what happened so that you don't have to live feeling guilty and you don't have to live giving bitter things to other people instead of sweet things to other people in the name of God. See, our purpose is to love God and love people, to love God and serve him and live serving him by helping and serving other people too. And in order to do that well, 
our hearts have to be right before him. And we want to do what's right. We want to do what's good. Sometimes we make a wrong choice. Sometimes we get that mixed up. But God is a loving God, and he always forgives. It's always right for us to do exactly as we have read that Jesus did, tell the truth no matter what. Let's pray as we close our time at Bible Exploration today. Dear God, we thank you that we could be together at Bible Exploration. We thank you that you teach us from your word so many amazing and wonderful things. And we thank you that because of Jesus, we have the power to do all things well, exactly the way that you want us to. We thank you, God, that when sometimes we get things mixed up, you are there always ready to listen as we say, I'm sorry, as we say, please forgive me, and you clean our hearts and make us ready to go on again doing the things that we should do in your name and for your glory. Lord, I thank you that you are showing us that no matter, even if it's hard sometimes, to do the right thing, to do things your way is always best. Help us this week, Lord, to choose well, to tell the truth no matter what, and to bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, I can't wait to see you next time at Bible Exploration. Let me tell you one thing before we go. If you didn't know it yet, Treasured VBS is coming right here to Walpole. Now, I did mention it a couple of weeks ago, and I mentioned it last week, but if you weren't with us, let me tell you, Vacation Bible School is coming July 19th to the 23rd. If you want more information, log on to the church website, which is allnationsworship.org. You can register, or you can contact me and ask any questions you want to. I hope to see you next week here. Really looking forward to seeing you at Vacation Bible School, too. Until then, bye for now.